foolishness I know. Well, good morning. It's a, uh, I think I'm going to have to move my pulpit further that way. You know, everybody's afraid to come forward. I, I understand, don't worry. I mean, it's probably because, I know, I mean, you know, if you're here this morning, if you're not, you're watching, there's people more on the, my right side than the left side. I mean, but the, no, I can't say that, I'll get myself in trouble this morning, but we want to we want to welcome you. Uh, if you're watching online again, we are we're, we're glad you're there. I I uh, I did I did jump on real quick and see Miss Debbie said hi and she's doing well. Um, uh, so she she's saying hi. I saw Courtney on there. Uh, I I saw Dan 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 or Lisa one of the two because they got this, the same Facebook. They share it, so you never they might both be watching at the same time this morning. So. Um, typically too, when when Lisa's not here, she watches it with one of her clients too. So. Um, uh, we're so glad you're here this morning or again tuned in online. Uh, hopefully, those that are watching online uh, and, and then here this morning, we did, we did go out and get a uh, different uh, video capture card that uh, uh, we, 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 we threw it and did a, no, we didn't really throw it, but we did the, the test to make sure that it would work. And, and so hopefully those watching online are seeing it. Um, with us testing it, we had those yellowly lights on me, uh, but by testing the, the, the setting on that camera uh, and, and with the new cap capture card that we have, it, it's the light's a lot better. So it must have been, you know, the newer capture card is a little bit better or a lot better, one of the two. Uh, so again, we're, we're so uh, um, glad to have that and the technology to be able to, to do that. Uh, and an update reminder or helping out. As you see, we, you know, we, we postponed uh, laying down the uh, sealant on the parking lot because, you know, the weather, I mean, we're Michigan, so one minute we blink, we know it could be snowy, rainy, whatever it may look like, right? But the plan is is uh, Perry and uh, uh, Dan are going to be heading down tomorrow morning to pick up the supplies. So they're, they're uh, Tentatively hoping to be back here by, what, 9.30, 10? Is that what you're, you're thinking, Perry? 9.30, 10 to be back here, and then we're going to, those that can come tomorrow, in, you know, 11, 12, we'll still be here um, working on it. So if you know of any friends or family that would love to come help us, you know, uh, push some squeegees around and, and, and move some sealant uh, you know, we, we'd love that. And maybe, maybe somebody else in here could help out by bringing water to the, those that are doing it, you know. Um, and we'll be getting some bottled water, so we'll have water here for that. But again, uh, if you're able to help, uh, please uh, join us. Uh, or pray that uh, it's not too hot and, you know, the guys and gals that are doing it, make sure they wear sunscreen so they don't get scorched. Um, but then I want to remind you... Uh, Two, that, that I always say men's breakfast, and I want to apologize. It's not just men's breakfast on Wednesdays. I mean, they're, they, they are all, they're men that are there, excuse me. But anybody that is, is a able body to get to breakfast on Wednesday at 8.30 is welcome at the table. Uh, I did make it this Wednesday, past Wednesday, and uh, it, was, it was great. Uh, Linda showed up and was there for a little bit as well. Um, and uh, so again, it's it's a great fellowship time. Uh, the guys that are there, that, you know, they you know, if you're there for 15, 20 minutes, you know, you know, they'll they'll enjoy the company. Um, again, it was it's great fellowship time. So wanting you to to uh, um, know and you're invited to that. Uh, other than that, with within opportunities, uh, there's 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 not much in in there. You know, just stay tuned as we're you know thinking of new things and ways to do things. Um, excuse me, let me let me rephrase. There is one more thing I forgot, my brain. Um, Tim was going to remind me in a minute here, I know. Uh, but due to, you know, the summer of what it was, we, 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 we had thought to, to joining, doing our, our uh, 
adult Bible study Sunday school class on, on Sunday mornings, but right now as, as we've had sparse of, you know, people on vacation things, um, we're going we're gonna to postpone. We're not going to use the word cancel. We're going to postpone and, and relaunch in, in uh, September back Sunday school for the adults, uh, you know, because we're, you know, our leaders are always on vacation, which I don't, I don't blame them. I'd be up in the UP too. I mean, I'd be hanging with family as much as I can. So again, they're, they're, that's uh, postponed till then. Uh, children's church, though, that is still is still going on throughout the summer. Uh, so the children that are here, you will continually having that time of uh, enjoyment with Miss Connie, Miss Linda, or whoever decides to go back there and help. Um, but I tell you, oh, we do. I didn't bring them, but there's cookies out here after church. So, so when you leave today, we're sorry those watching, you know, you can think of the cookies, but Shelly brought cookies and made some cookies, so we have cookies now out there um, as well. Uh, last week we had them, but they were hidden. Well, they, they were, you know, but they're there for you. So when you leave today, I saw the box. There's enough in there if you take one, two, or three. So, Tim, when you head out today, and I know you're, you're looking at going on a take a couple with you, you know. Beth, take one for Beth. She'll, she'll enjoy it. But anyway, we're so glad you're here this morning. And it's, as, as you see, it's, it's our treat. Uh, Miss Vonnie, she's, she's away this, this weekend. She's, she is camping. She is enjoying the, the time. And so um, I'm going to say it's special, I feel, um, in connecting. I had, I had always heard her sing, and we sing, she's in the background singing. And, and not to put her on a, on a, on a, on a, a uh, you know, hopefully she ain't getting nervous over there. Um, but you hear her singing. And, and I, I approached her and Ms. Vaughn did. We said, hey, you know, knowing where we're at, would you be, ever want to be willing to help lead and sing and worship? And she said, I, sure, I'd love to. So I just, you know, again, I mean, she's a member of our church, but I, I just want to give a warm welcome that, she, you know, and loving that she is. I know she doesn't want it, um, but we're just great that Shelly is, you know, able to, to come in and help and in, in, in sing during, during seasons of time when we, we need a, a singer up here because you ain't going to want to hear me singing because... Somebody back there, will, they will surely mute me. So um, with that, we're going we're gonna to worship this morning. We're going to sing uh, the solid rock. And I'm going to say to you before she gets up, if, you're, if you want to stand or sit, you're able today. You know, find the posture you want to be in. If it's, if it's jumping, if it's sitting, where it's at, may it be a posture for you this morning in worship. Hey, everyone. We're going to jump right in.
if you know this song in the chorus, you're supposed to lean. So just to let you know. <laughs> like today I got different hats, you know, help, helping them back in the sound booth the, the, today a little bit, and because, you know, Shelly's up here helping out as well, so, you know, when we work together, that's what, it, you know, a team does, helps each other out in their different voids, but we, we come to a time of our, our worship of our tithes and offerings. Uh, the uh, offering plate here in, in, in the church, again, is, is found underneath the uh, light switches in the back as you're coming in or you, you go. Uh, or if you're, you're watching online or even here, again, I remind you that our church website, which if you haven't gone to it yet, it's redone. It looks a little bit different. Uh, Midlandfaith.org. Uh, and, and there's a tab on the upper right corner that says giving. It's secure. You can give there if you uh, freely feel so. Or again, you can give uh, snail mail. Uh, I know that's still something that's, that's around. We still do get mail. Uh, 654 South Meridian Road, Midland, Michigan, 48640. Again, the opportunities are there to give. And, and as we give, we, we, we don't just give to give, like I say each week. We give according to what God calls us to give. You know, and I always say to you, and I say to anybody, if you can give a penny, give a penny. If you give, you know, give your heart to Jesus. Give what you can give, and, you know, we can definitely use what God is giving us to bless the ministries here at the church. So again, I ask if you'd pray with me over our offering this morning, and uh, as we uh, continue within worship this morning. Oh, Father God, we give you thanks today for each gift and giver. Lord, we pray that your Holy Spirit guides us to utilize the financial obligations of this church. If it's the little that we get to the load that we, we got, to whatever it is, Lord, may you utilize it. May it be used for your glory and your honor and your praise. And Lord, give you thanks for each giver and each hand that, that places what they place in that plate. <clears throat> 
And Lord, we just ask that you come and guide us and be with us. In your blessed name I pray, amen. Thank you, Miss Shelley. I'm losing it. Where is it? It's on this page. So I kept praying, obviously, this week for our technology. You know, that's, it may not be something that bugs some people 
but it can sometimes bug you when, you know, somebody's wanting to watch and people are connecting. And, and so, like I said, Kane and had come down a couple of days and went through working on it and testing it and working on the, the uh, video and everything. And like I said, so it's a praise, praise right now that I do know, right? It's still, it's still working on us right now, Kane, right? Still working on us. Um, several prayer requests on there. I know um, uh, Lisa's got an unspoken one that she posted out there. Dan did one of the two. Um, then I know they're, they're heading on vacation to go down to Florida too next week. So pray for, you know, travel mercies there. You got some of our other church family are on vacation right now traveling. Some of them are heading off maybe tonight, tomorrow to head out and enjoy some vacation time. So obviously we pray for our church family when they're on vacation and in a way. And I say it's a joy when you're sometimes on vacation, you still have an opportunity to still to connect with your church family. You know, may not be on a Sunday morning, but you'll still be able to stay tuned on what's going on with, with social media and with, you know, the, the services online. So that's, that's a joy and a praise there on both sides of it. Um, but uh, as we go to prayer this morning, in, in church-wise, is there any anybody here, is there anything that was added online, Cain, that you know of that anybody's asking for prayers? Anybody? Kylie? Yep. Traveling down to... Joe? So a good, good buddy of Joe's has passed away this past week. So just, you know, be with uh, Joe's, you know, pray for Joe's friend's family. Uh, and, and obviously Joe, he can maybe be there for his friend's family as well. Um, obviously, like I say, keep Debbie Stevens in prayer. She's, she's trying to be Speedy Gonzalez, I hear, and she, she took it a little too far. <laughs> you know, she's trying, though, is what, what Perry's saying. And, and uh, um and I know she put a praise on there too on her on her Facebook page. Perry built her a ramp to get into her bed, and uh, you know she posted on there that she was able to get some good sleep. So, you know, I, I call it a praise for Perry's sake. You know, he's, he's able to help her get some good good rest and sleep. So, again, uh, continue to keep praying for Debbie there. Um, uh, other than that, uh, any others in church, Larry? So your sister's got some decisions to make. He said Linda, L-I-N-D-A. That's a good name. Shoot. <laughs> but we'll be, we'll be praying for Linda um, in, in the decisions that she makes and discerning the next move. So keep, that, keep uh, Larry's sister Linda in prayers for that. Um, my wife, Linda. Yes, yeah, yeah. Bob and Joyce's, uh, Holly had their, their their little the little boy their little boy, and I forgot the name. All of a sudden, it was there. But um, yeah, we are definitely, um, and it's a it's a joy too. So Ella, obviously, many of you guys know Ella is Bob and Joyce's Bob's mom. So it's just a it's a joy to have Ella connecting via online with us all the way from Texas as well. So she's she's. Uh, Definitely one we can continue praying for, her pacemaker to be replaced, and obviously the, the new grandbaby. So any, any others? Well, then let's take it to the Lord in prayer uh, this morning. And uh, Lord, we just give you thanks today for being so, so good in the midst of life and things around us. Lord, we, we do pray for you know, those that are on our bulletin in, in the prayer 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 list, Lord, that uh, you see those, and uh, 
Lord, you hear them, and we can keep them in continual prayer, you know, from those local to state to, you know, just all the officials and leaders. Uh, Lord, we still continue to pray for Haiti in the life and the, and the situations that are all taking place there. And Lord, right now, we just pray for our community, our church, you know, the families as, as uh, um, we pray for uh, vacation trips and, 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 and travel and, and uh, Lord, we just ask that you just be with our church families as, as they go out and Lord, they, they spend time together wherever it may be, but getting the rest and the respite that they need to, to be able to come back and to, to work, to, to play, to, to do the, the things you call them to do. So Lord, we just give you thanks for that. And Lord, we pray for, for Joe and his friend as, he, as he's lost a, a good friend of his, but Lord, we pray that you can be with Joe as Joe is, is there to just love on his friend's family and be there for them. And Lord, just to, again, we pray for the family in the, in, the, in the weeks to come. And Lord, right now we, we, we lift up uh, Larry, Larry's sister, Linda, Lord, to you as, as she's got some decisions to make. Lord, you, you know what they are. We truly believe that you know the right decision she'll make. But Lord, we pray that you just guide and direct her in that process, Lord. And, and we, we give you thanks for the opportunity we have to, to, to bring that to prayer so that not only is Linda making a decision on her own, but Lord, she's got family and friends and people around that are praying that you just guide her in, in helping her and giving her that sign of where the next step is to be, to where to go, Lord. And Lord, right now we, we, we do lift up uh, Ella Stratton as, as she's got a pacemaker to, to be replaced here soon, Lord. Uh, we just pray that you're, you're with the doctors and with her. Uh, again, Lord, a, a, a procedure is a procedure if it's, if it's a small poke to a, to a large hole. So Lord, we just pray that you're with the doctors and the physicians as they work through her and, and help her uh, in replacing that pacemaker. And Lord, we, we do praise you for children, you know, Lord. And we pray, uh, as, as we can tell, you know, uh, Bob and Joyce, you know, Holly, uh, Ella, they're excited for this, this, this new little bundle of joy that's coming to the world, Lord. And we just pray that you just are a blessing, you, your, your guidance, and maybe, maybe this little, little, little child, a little baby, will just be there to bring light into a dark world in some ways, Lord. So we just pray that. And so, Lord, I, there's many spoken and unspoken within the, in the, the room and online and connecting today. So, Lord, I just pray that you are ever so present. And, Lord, that sh- your will be done and that it's your words and not ours. And it's that we can come to you where we feel sometimes they're empty prayers. But, Lord, that we're coming to you praying, Abba, Father, we need, we're desiring, we want and Lord, I ask that you come, be ever so present today in the midst of here. And Lord, if those are watching where they're watching, that you are ever so present and touching their lives. And Lord, we give you praise today in your blessed name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, again, hey, if you are a child in the room, or maybe even a child at heart in the room, uh, you're dismissed to, to uh, hang out with the children in children's church time. Uh, and, uh, and enjoy learning from Miss Connie and, and, and uh, having the treats as we're in here. But remember, we got our treats after service, so we're good. Because Shelly's Shelley, helping out there. So what happens when I say there's treats going to happen, they just show up. Because I don't know if you'd want my cooking, because my cooking cookies are not as good as Shelly's or, or that carrot cake Miss Connie makes. Well, I tell you, you know, this last week as, as we've gone through and as I go through just, just praying, discerning, it's like the Lord, you know, I don't know, he speaks sometimes in ways, I mean, we always say he speaks in ways we cannot see, you know. I think about that old, I don't know, to me I call it old, but, you know, you know God will make a way when there seems to be no way. He works in ways you cannot see. He will, he will make a way for me. He will be my guide. He will draw me close by his side. Y'all know I'm, you know, you've heard that, right? I mean, to me, I feel, I feel like I heard it, and it was so ingrained in me because the church was down in, in southern Illinois as a youth director, youth pastor, and the media guy. Every, our first service of that church, you know, that's something we all stood up and we said. And I'm like, man, God, you'll make a way when there seems to be no way. You work, you know, in, in the last, you know, couple of weeks we talked about searching and praying and, and, and what his prayers looks like. 
And then I, I thought to myself today, like, we've gone through that process of search me, know me, and send me, you know, or, or, or know me, and know, grow, go as our mission statement of the church of know me. I want to know him. I want to grow in him, and I want to go serve alongside him. That's Jesus. And I thought about, but who are you? Like, in all that, who am I? Who are you? And in Colossians 3, 12, 17, jump to me. But, but before we think of who, who we are, it's children. I think about, I mean, us in the room that have, had, have ch- had, had children, you know, I remember the hospital stay. I remember, I mean, I knew my son was going to be a boy. I knew he was going to, he we already had his name. But I remember recalling after he was born, it didn't say, it just said on the thing, baby boy. He didn't have a name yet. You know, we had his name, but the hospital never got his name until we signed all those paperwork, right? But his name tag said baby boy. So you knew it, right? That was his identification. That was his, his way of introducing to the world. Like, hey, here's a little boy, and here he is. And I think about, you know, churches, you know, in turn, some churches, they wear name tags, right? You come in, you get a name tag or your name badge, and it's, it's your identification. It's your name. It's, it's easy when I come in a room sometimes and you see uh, somebody wearing their name tag, it's so much easier to go, hey, ch- Charlie, oh, is it Charlie or Chuck? I, you know, you got the introduction. Hey, I got me. Oh, oh, your pastor. You know, your pastor. Court. You have that identification, that 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 introduction, and it's so much easier. And and I think that's where it's at today. When when we look at who are you, you have a name, you you know, and it's something that's known. You know, when when that child came, it's a boy. You know, when my when they, then I got the name Corey. That's my identification of who I am. And, and I'm thinking to myself, but it's not just my identification of who I am here. It's, it's who I am on earth, you know. It's who I am to the people. And, 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 I, and so this morning I want to read because Colossians really jumped out at me, thinking of myself and, and the way that I react and, and who I am. And it, and it begins by, sa- and it says this in Colossians. It says, since God chose you to be the holy people he loves, you must clothe yourself with tender-hearted mercy, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Make allowances for each other's faults and forgive anyone who offends you. Remember the Lord forgave you, so you must forgive others. Hmm. Above all, clothe yourself with love, which Binds us all together in perfect harmony and let the peace that comes from Christ rule in your hearts. For as members of one body, you are called to live in peace and always be thankful. Let the message about Christ in all its riches fill your lives. Teach and counsel each other with all the wisdom he gives. Sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs to God with thankful hearts. And whatever you do or say, do it as a representative of the Lord Jesus. Give thanks through him to God the Father. There's so much jam-packed in those, what, six passages there. There's so much to me. When I read it, I said to myself, man, who am I? You know, I've been, I've been, I've been walking this Christian life. I understand what, what, what the Christian is and who and all, but, but I've been walking it. And, but, what is it but what does it look like to me? You know, and, and I, I look back at this and I say to myself, have I been the greatest Christian? Have I really been the greatest Christ follower, because when I read the beginning, I'm like, man, I've, I'm not home. I don't, I don't have, you know, the gentleness as much as I should have. I got a five-year-old. I don't have the patience for him sometimes that I should have. As the scripture says, you know, be patient. And then, and then here's the next one that I, you know, faults. I have faults. We all have faults. 
but I shouldn't look at your faults and, and talk down at you, belittle you. But I have to forgive those who offend me. I'm like, man, Corey, okay, who are you? If, if I'm a person that's trying to be as Christ-like as I can, I gotta, I gotta walk through life. And there's gonna be times I might not like you, but I have to like you. I mean, I, I, I believe God calls us to, to, to look at all people in a lens of saying, hey, you know, I, 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 have, I might have hurt you. I'm sorry. You know, it's, it's, it's even, it's not in this passage, but in, 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 in Matthew 18, it, it, it speaks volumes in there. When I have a problem with, with somebody, I need to go to them and, and, and talk to them and say, man, I'm sorry, I've, I've hurt you. You know, I have to go to them, you know, so I have to forgive you. And what it's teaching me too is I got to forgive people. I mean, I have family that have hurt me. Family called me names. Family have treated me, you know, you know, and I got to look at them, their family. Just like the church, you know, I know somebody in here, I'm going to get under your skin as, as a person. But it doesn't mean we can walk out of the doors of the church and say, you know, pastor really hurt me, I'm not coming back to that church anymore. You know, the pastor said something I don't like, I'm not coming, you know. You know, forgive one another who offends you. I mean, again, Matthew tells us, and if it doesn't happen, if in Matthew 18 there it says, if, if you go to that person and it doesn't work, then bring somebody alongside with you to walk with you to say, hey, let's walk together through this. You know, I mean, so to me, I, I look at this thing, man, oh, okay, what, where are we at? And, and, and here's where it's at in, 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 in the, the who are you. I mean, Christians have a unique title. That's who you are. The Christians have this unique title. I mean, because we see that in verse 2. I mean, he calls us the holy people or people of God. So, so he's, he's naming you something. He's already telling you who you are. So not by natural birth. See, John 1, 3, God created everything through him and nothing was created except through him. So again, your, your, your unique title is not by joining the church or a group. It's not. You know, a lot of times, you know, I mean, we, we hone in on wanting membership and, and gaining the body and, and growing the church and so forth. I mean, ultimately, our, that doesn't, it's not what it is. And it's not merely by, by you know, this mentally accepting what the Bible, you know, the Bible, I mean, you know, I believe the Bible is, like I've said before, my basic instruction before leaving this earth, I believe the Bible is the, the inspired true word of God. It's, it's, it's written and it's what it is. It's, there's nothing that we need to be adding in that some other denominations and other people add in. The Bible is, other words in my turn, black and white, it's, it's, it, but, but, but God puts it into the full color. God loved us and chose us. That's, that's what's unique about this whole unique title that, that we're the people of God. Like God loves us and he chose us. So we're, well, what I look at is, is that the idea of that we're adopted by God, right? I mean, Galatians 4, uh, 3 through 5 says, and that's why it was with us before Christ came. We were like children. We were slaves to the basic spiritual principles of this world. But when the right time came, God sent his son, born of a woman, subject to the law. God sent him to buy freedom for us who were slaves to the law so that he can adopt us as his very own children. And what I love reading in there, what we're facing in this world is we're looking at the word race a lot. There's nothing in there that says if you're white, black, pink, Asian, whatever color pigmented you are, you know, it says nothing about that. It says that you were, you, you, you know, he came in for you and I to, to help us, to adopt us as his very own children. You know, God, does, God doesn't look at that. But in this world, we're seeing people look at that as an issue. And God says, hey, I've came for all. 
those that are here today and those that are coming tomorrow. You know, God is, is, is speaking for the people. I mean, that's why Christ came and died. That's why Christ did what he did. But then we look at this unique title, but then within ourselves, there's still something I, I think we, we want to call personal obligations. You know, Christians have some personal obligations. We see that. I mean, again, the obligations is simply that we see that there's, there's reference, so then, uh, or the phrase, you are the, the people of God, the phrase, he loved you and chose you. You must comes into this passage, I think four times, you know, in, in, in other translations it may be less, but the, the fact that you must, I mean, what does that say to you? When, when, if I said you must, what does that, what does that imply? Does anybody, what, what comes to your mind when, when, if I said, you must do this, what, is, what comes to your mind? You, you have to do it, right? Or, um, or, or what, what, what it comes into here is, is it's the imperative sense or to command, and it's an absolute, right? Imperative, you know, is to do it. Um, and I was talking to a friend of mine, you know, who, who was going through, going through life and, 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 you know, another friend, uh, and, and, and this other friend was, was, I was talking to him, he's, he's, he's also in ministry, and uh, I joked and I said, because some guy called me and says, hey, because he's, he's, he, he wanted to know uh, reference-wise, is, is this guy going to make a good pastor in their church and so forth, and my comment was this, I said, if you ask the guy to jump in a pool full of piranhas, if the Holy Spirit's telling him to do so, that man's going to jump into the pool full of piranhas. Now, I'm not saying that's something you should truly do, but he's saying that if that's something that, that, that you know, again, if, if you're telling me I must do this, you know, I'm going to jump in and do so, right? I mean, it, it's the same phrase Jesus used in John 3, uh, 7. So don't be surprised when I say you must be born again. You must so there's an obligation, you know. So in life, we, we, you know, who we are, a lot of times we, we've been in church, we understand church, but do we forget that you must be born again? You must forgive. You must be humili- have humility. You must have gentleness. You must have patience. But I will tell you, those, if you pray for patience, Better be prepared because it's going to be a time of patience. Patience. You know, you must forgive one another who offends you. Or we must do so to move forward in life. I mean, it, it leaves no options or alternatives, right? And when I say these, and, and I look at these obligations, you know, like I said, as I just named them a little bit there, I mean, it talks about two, two ways, I would say, in this, in this passage here. If you want to flip back to that, uh, um, the beginning of that, the, the verse 12 there for me, uh, it's, it's from 12 to, to 14, it's that of how we are living, the conduct of for living in living you know again you to be a holy people who lo- uh, he loves you must you must clothe yourself with tender hearted mercy kindness humility gentleness and patience make allowances for each other's faults and forgive one another who offends you remember the lord forgave you so you must forgive others man so he's telling us there but then he tells, above all, clothe yourself with love, which binds us all together in perfect harmony. I mean, I like that. Clothe yourself with love. And then we have this conduct in worship. You know, this, this, this worship, you know, the obligation of verses 15 through 17, where it said, and let the peace that comes from Christ rule in your hearts. For as members of one body, you are called to live in peace and to always be thankful. 
Let this message about Christ in all its riches fill your lives. Teach and counsel each other with the wisdom he gives. Sing psalms and praises and spiritual songs to God with thankful hearts. And whatever you do or say, do it as a representative of the Lord Jesus. Give thanks through him to God the Father. So we're to, we're to have this idea of understanding how to live, how we're to live and how we're to conduct ourselves. That doesn't, I, I don't equate to when I say worship, worship doesn't mean just on a Sunday morning. You know, worship can be how we conduct ourselves in the, in the context of uh, connecting with people. You know, small group, Bible study, out in the community, you know, how we worship is also a way of, 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 of what people see. But I, li- I like here, too, the last point I'll have this, this morning, and then we'll, we'll uh, break bread together and commune in this morning. So again, if you're watching us this morning, if you don't have your elements in front of you, um, I want to just figure I'd give you a second to open your fridge and get what it is you need and or what, you know, cover for the cracker or bread or what it may be. Um, but this last point Christians have a gauge by which to check themselves. So even with this, so, so we've got a unique title. You know, we're people of God. You're, you're probably thinking, Pastor, it's a Sunday school answer. I get it. But I think sometimes we've got to go back to those Sunday school answers and Sunday school moments to, to start to, to rethink some things, right? To check ourselves. Then Christians have some personal obligations, but then we have this idea that Christians have a gauge by which to check themselves. That gauge. This is something that I struggle with and I think I had to, I had to learn and I've had to learn throughout um, my life before Christ because I didn't understand it, but then my life as a leader and a person and something as I move forward is is that gauge of peace, the peace of God. And if I don't have a peace in God, there's, there's, there's something potentially missing, right? I mean, there are two kinds of peace here, I think, that we can equate this to. The peace in the individual heart. What does my heart say? What is my heart feeling? And, and I'm catching myself a lot of times saying the gut and I mean, when I say gut, I gotta, I, I'm meaning what's the Holy Spirit prompting? You know, how's the Holy Spirit working in the midst of me? What is the peace that the Holy Spirit is guiding me as an individual? And then we have to have this, this peace in the body. And I, I mean, the peace in the body, that's the church. And I feel like in today, there's, there's this peace that's, that's it's, it's, it's broken, because of what's going around, around us and, and, and through us and, and in the midst of us. And, and we're to have this peace that, that surpasses all understanding, right? We have to have this peace in, in, in knowing what we're doing. You know, and, and that peace gives us a check. And that check is the Holy Spirit. You see, God intends for peace to rule in both these places, right? In my, in my, my, my heart... And, and, and within the body. And we all play a part in that. And, and we have to look at ourselves and say, who are we? are we? Are we for Christ or against Christ? Who are we and what we do? Because the peace of God is disturbed by the wrong conducts. And that, that means simply too, when we do things like this morning as we break bread together, you know, we are not a table of a church that says, you, may, you know, you don't have to partake and you can't partake. We're a denomination that says anybody may partake in the body and blood of Christ, but in hopes that you're, you're living in a repentance life, in hopes that you have, you're, you're, you're growing in, in, in that, you know. But a lot of people come to take communion just because, well, everybody's doing it. You know, even on a Sunday morning when we take communion, communion doesn't mean, you, you, you may feel that t- today's not a day that you want to take communion. That doesn't make you any different than anybody else, but that's a time for you to, to, to connect and have that peace 
you know, that gives you that peace. But a lot of times we come to that communion and, and everybody's doing it, I gotta do it. We don't ever want communion, and I don't, I don't believe that, that it's in my heart to make communion this ritual that we do because we have to do it because that's what the discipline says. That's what we do as a church. I believe communion is the representation of the body of Christ and the blood of Christ shed for you and me. So this morning, before we go on to pray, and then we're going we're gonna to take communion together this morning. Father God, I just give you thanks today for each able body in here, Lord, and those that are watching online now and later. Lord, we ask that you guide and direct. Lord, they stretch themselves and ask them, am I truly who you say I am, Lord? And Lord, right now I pray that if anybody is, is watching or here is, is feeling that they, they, they're, they're, they're walking a tight walk or a loose walk, Lord, we pray that through your body and blood shed for us for the forgiveness of our sins, we can walk out of here today saying, hey, I learned something today or I connected the pieces today. But Lord, we pray that you guide us today as we go and we come to the table that's been prepared before us as we take communion together. In your blessed name I pray, amen. Well, this morning we, we transition to a time of communion. Uh, and and as, as we come, like I say, we're not, we're not, a, we're not a church that, that, that's going to denounce you from coming and receiving communion. Uh, but we want you to come with a rightful heart to communion. You know, a prepared heart. It's okay if today you're struggling on something, in something. But we pray as you take communion and you take it back to your seats or you're at home and you're in, in, in your sacred place. That when you receive these elements, you take them that you can, as you receive and take those elements, you can just meditate within the word and, and, and meditate in, in God's heart. So this morning, the table has been prepared before you come and receive the elements. I just always think about that night. And I don't know if it's because I think about that night because when I was in Israel, I walked in that space, in that, in that place that they had said, this is where Jesus spent his last time with his disciples in that upper room where he, said, and where he, he passed the bread, he passed the cup of 
of juice, but he said to his disciples, this is my body broken for you. And he said, as often as you can, in remembrance of me, take and eat. Likewise, he then, knowing what was going to take place, took a cup of juice wine, and he passed it to his disciples, said, this is the blood of the new covenant shed for you and for the forgiveness of your sin, for sins. Drink this as often as you can in remembrance of me. So as we go today, let's go out asking those questions, who are we? Who are you? Maybe within asking who you are, where, where do we fit moving forward together in the midst of what God's calling us to do? How do we keep each other moving forward? How do we encourage each other in the midst of because each one of us has a talent that God is just ready, waiting for us to unleash. There's many in the room and many watching. I know that God's, he's, he's showing. So I just, I just pray that the Lord blesses you and keeps you and directs you and guides you. Go out today. Be the church God calls you to be. Be the people God calls you to be. And hey, love you, church.